Okay, shalom everyone and welcome to another Thursday night Isaiah study. So we're looking at Isaiah chapter 28 and we're going through the first seven verses on this chapter. So before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that we can study your word. Lord, we thank you so much for your word that you preserved for so many thousands of years that we could get to know you and get to know more about ourselves, Lord, and, and grow in our relationship with you. Lord, I, tonight, as, as we go through your word, I ask that your truth would go forth and it would touch our hearts and help us to live our lives for your glory. And we, we pray all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, so <clears throat> we're on Telegram. So you can uh, find me on Telegram if you want to talk to me at any time. You can, you know, just, there's a Telegram channel right there on the screen. And uh, we, Rabbi Jeremiah, he teaches Hebrew and Greek classes, you know, so we got a lot of great content and he streams a teaching every day. You know, he says there's a teaching going on every day. So, uh, you know, come on to Telegram and, and check us out. So Isaiah chapter 28, you know, we're looking at verses one through seven. And when I was looking at the commentaries on this, on these this chapter here, you know, John Oswald said in Isaiah 28 through 33, you know, that this is a new section, okay, and that the prophet Isaiah is continuing his discussion on the foolishness of trusting in the nations instead of trusting in the Lord. So Isaiah focuses his attention and returns to Judah and Jerusalem. And remember that when uh, Isaiah was in chapter 13 to 23, remember that Isaiah was looking at Israel and the issues of unfaithfulness. And then in chapters 24 to 27, we see him drawing out a way and looking at a more global scale and giving us a generalized truth of God being sovereign over all of the nations, that he is Lord, that he is king, and he is the only true God. Okay, and so now we're entering into this new section in chapter 28 to 33, and Isaiah had said uh, what he had said would come to pass. You know, this this is this happens with Assyria attacking Judah after having attacked Israel and Samaria. And we remember that Ahaz had allied himself with Assyria in the war with northern Israel. And Isaiah predicted that a flood would burst forth and overcome the kingdom of Judah, according to Isaiah chapter 8, verses 6 through 8. So when we survey chapters 28 to 33, historically, Samaria falls around 721 BC, and then Sennacherib attacks Jerusalem 20 years later in 701 BC. And the text suggests that Judah is seeking to form an alliance with Egypt. And in, we, we see this in Isaiah chapter 30 and 31. And then Isaiah says that this alliance is a bad idea and as dumb as when you have made an alliance with Assyria, right? And so Isaiah says that Egypt's help is useless and unreliable, right? And we remember that, that is, he's, Egypt's described as that swaying reed, right? And so Isaiah finds it to be ridiculous for a nation to trust in Egypt when the Lord God Almighty himself has proven time and time again his reliability and his faithfulness, okay? And so here is where pride enters into the equation. You know, the leadership of Judah were overcome with the influence of their powerful position and the power and privilege of their positions provided them, okay? And this illustrates for us the dangers of being in a powerful position in government or in community, you know, and to the one who finds himself in such an influential position, this has the power to blind one from the truth. So it's something that that is what Isaiah is doing here. He's kind of drawing us back to, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Measure ourselves, you know, test ourselves to, to, to see whether we are being humble or not. And these, these positions of influence, these positions of power, as, as Isaiah says, has the capability to blind truth, right? Blind one from the truth, which then leads to destructive outcomes, you know, due to not trusting in the Lord, you know, trusting in self. And because one turns from mercy and truth and justice, you know, in order to maintain 
their powerful position. We see this going on today, right? In in our uh, our governments, how the uh, the politicians literally sell their souls for power and wealth, and even during this uh, this COVID thing that uh, happened, the medical community. What's been going on here in the last two years, right? You know, we can we can see these things. Now, in this section, Isaiah twenty eight through 33 chapters or 30 28 to 33 throughout these chapters one sees the repetition of the funeral cries of woe according to isaiah 28 verse 1 29 verse 1 29 verse 15 chapter 30 verse 1 chapter 31 verse 1 and chapter 33 verse 1 so it's basically it's all over the place right and at least once per chapter except for chapter 32 but one would think that by this time the people would open their eyes to recognize that it is their sin of not trusting in the Lord that is leading to all of these deaths that's occurring all around them, right? And the blindness, however, continues, which leads to their eventual destruction and then deportation, you know, in the Babylonian deportation. Remember that. You know, so we note how the Lord's providing so many ways for the people to recognize the error of their ways. And, and it's all right here in the Word of God. You know, why? another reason why we should be studying God's Word every day, right? And the leaders, the leaders, however, are, they're blind, they're drunk, and they are hungry for power and self-aggrandizement, right? And this is how Isaiah characterizes Judah from the beginning of his book. And this is what we see here in Isaiah 28, 29, 30. Okay, and so we take note of the events that God is bringing in order to deflate the arrogance of these leaders. And, and this is the idea of being humbled. And this reminds us of something that the prophet Jeremiah said concerning pride and being humble in salvation. You know, the prophet Jeremiah is regarded as one of the three major Jewish prophets. That's Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, okay, the three major ones. And Jeremiah lived from about 640 to 570 BC and began serving God as um, serving as God's prophet during the 13th year of King Josiah's reign. So Jeremiah's ministry actually spanned the reigns of five different kings in Judah. And remember, I, I had mentioned that Jeremiah's his his lifespan was between 640 to 5. 70 BC. Okay, so you see here, Josiah, Josiah, he was between 640 and 609, and Jehoaz was at 609, and then Jehoiakim, he was at 609 to 598, and then Jehoiakim, he was from 598 to 597, a pretty short reign there, and then um, Zedekiah, then was from 597 to 586. So you can we can see here that Jeremiah lived longer than these these kings, right? And he they all these five kings: Josiah, Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah. These five kings were um, all fit into the lifespan of Jeremiah and his ministry. And so this was a this was a 40-year ministry that saw the fall of assyrian the assyrian empire and the rise of the babylonian dominance in the name in the ancient near east and jeremiah saw nebuchadnezzar and his rise to power and the military campaigns that that came against jerusalem and, and against egypt like uh, the battle of carchemish in 605 bc okay so we note from the book of jeremiah that he was living in Jerusalem when Nebuchadnezzar became king and captured Jerusalem in 597 BC and dis disposed of the Jewish king Jehoiakim and installed Zedekiah as his vassal. We read that in 2 Kings chapter 24. And we note that Zedekiah was never considered the true king of Jerusalem. And during Zedekiah's reign, Jeremiah advised the leaderships of Judah to be humbled and to submit to Babylonian rule. And he made it a point to state that they are not to look to Egypt as the ally. ally. And we, we see here in, uh, this was Jeremiah that advised this, right? Okay, and we see it in Jeremiah chapter 2 and chapter 37. Okay, now the leadership needed to recognize their error of not trusting in the Lord and that this description was due to their sins and 
um, the, sorry, this destruction was due to their sins and that they needed to repent immediately, right? However, the leadership refused to listen, and so the destruction of the city was inevitable. And we read that in Jeremiah chapter 5. Now, um, we read in Jeremiah 5 something very interesting, what Jeremiah had said uh, to the leadership of uh, of in Jerusalem. Okay, so here we see Jeremiah, Jeremiah, uh, Perek, Hey, okay, chapter 5 and verses 15 to verse 18 here. So he says following, he says, Hineni mevi alehem goi mimer chak by Israel, Israel, um, neomeronai. So I will, behold, I will bring upon you a nation from afar off, the house of Israel, declares the Lord. And then it goes on and it says, a, a goy etan who, okay, a, a, a mighty nation, and then a goy uh, meolam who, a, an, an ancient nation or a, a uh, worldly nation, right? And then um, go, goy lo teda leshono. Okay, so they would not know their their language, their tongue, right? His tongue, and lo tishma ma yedaber, and and they would not be able to hear um, what they say. And the King James translates this as understand, but uh, we see the the word shema. It's tishma lo lo tishma. Okay, is not not hearing, not knowing, right? Not not being able to understand, basically. That's what, that's what this means. Okay, and then it goes, and it says that the Ashpeto uh, Kekever uh, Patuach, okay, that that the, <clears throat> the quiver is like an open grave, right? And then it goes on, it says, Kulam Giborim, that they are all strong men or mighty men. And then it goes on, Isaiah, or sorry, Jeremiah goes on in verse 17. It says, Ve'achal ketsiracha ve'lachmecha. So, um, and they will eat, change my color here. They will eat your crops and your bread, okay? And then it goes on, it says, Ve'ochlu benecha u'benotecha. Like I said, they will, they will consume your your sons and your daughters, and then it goes on. It says, "Veyochal tzon tzoncha uvkarecha," and so they will consume your your sheep and your your uh, cattle. And then it goes on. It says, "Veyochal gafnecha ut enatecha," so they will consume your vine and your figs. And then it goes on, it says, Yershesh are mitzarecha, that they will, um, they will like impoverish the city, your your city, and the fenced cities, okay? And then it goes, um, Asher atem boteach behena becharev, okay? So that, and that, that, that um, you trust in the uh, the sword, okay, and then in verse eighteen, it says it says gam vegam bayamim hahema neum adonai lo esa et chem kala, and that means that um, in those days, says the Lord, I will make a uh, a full end of you. I'll make an end of you right here. Okay, he will. I'm sorry, he will not make. Not he'll low low say at him, um, kala. He will not make an end of you. Okay, so we note how Jeremiah states specifically that God is bringing a powerful nation for the purpose of their destruction, and, and this is what we see here in uh, in verse fifteen. It says, "Hineni mevi alehem goy from afar off." Okay, a nation that is from afar off. And a, a very powerful nation he is. And the interesting thing is that this nation will be from a very distant place, you know, indicating that they're having a language they do not know. 
and their arrows are like open graves, meaning that death will come. You know, they, it, the arrows will get their mark, and they will surround the city, indicated by their eating up everything in the land. Okay, so you're talking cattle, you're talking veget, veget, vegetation, right? And then you're talking even their sons and daughters will be consumed, right? And we read, and it says that, nevertheless, in those days, says the Lord, in verse 18 here, that I will not make a full end of you. Okay, so and this is this is an important thing because this indicates God's faithfulness to remain faithful to David and to those who are faithful in the land, right? And the leaders of Judah, however, they, they rejected the message. They re rejected the word of God. They rejected the prophecy of Jeremiah. And, and we note how uh, and Isaiah, right? And we note how Zedekiah was a vassal of Babylon. And so this follows through with how he was overcome with the influence of his power and position. And the power and privilege of that position prevented him from humbling himself and actually listening to the word of God. Okay. And so wealth and influence has this effect upon many today. So, th so we note that this was not just an ancient phenomenon. We see this going on today. And we see this throughout all levels of leadership today in government, pharmaceutical companies, the CDC, FDA, even the legal court systems, all the way from the judges, all the way down to the policemen and to the, even the average person. We see this going on. And so this is, this is another proof text for why these things that, that scriptures speak of apply to us today. You know, they, they, uh, this, is a, this is the nature of man, right? To trust in himself as opposed to trusting in God. Corruption is everywhere. And even in the election process, and if you haven't seen the movie 2000 Mules, check it out. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's amazing how corrupt the election process is. You know, the evidence is overwhelming for those who would take the time and actually look. And yet, very few are willing to see the truth. And the reason is these woke ideologies, you know, the lies of the liberals and the political left are trying to push on our society and all governments and nations around the world. And, and this is a proof that these things that Isaiah is saying is relevant to a modern era, to a modern time. And we note that leadership and the critics of Jeremiah considered him a false prophet who did not believe in Jerusalem's invincibility. You know, we see this in Jeremiah 7, verse 4. They, they call him, uh, those are lying words, right, that, that he's speaking. And we also note that the people in Jerusalem believed that the temple of God functioned like a good luck charm, you know, that it was, uh, that its presence somehow warded off the threat of destruction for Judah. And the temple... However, it does not function that way. It never did. And so Jeremiah warns the leadership according to Jeremiah chapter 7, verses uh, 5 through 8, as we see right here. So it says, it says the following, and, and it says, uh, it says, Ki'im hetev tetivu et derechem ve'et ma'alechem. Okay, so... Uh, that if you will, and then we see here, what, what's interesting is that the root word for these two words is tov, right? Good. Okay. And so it's basically, if you're, if you make good your ways, if, if you, if you amend, this is why the King James translates it as amending your ways. If you amend your, your ways, right? Your, your paths, and, um, and, and your deeds right here, that if you amend your ways and your deeds, and if you execute judgment, and you see this, it says, im aso ta'asu mishpat, okay? And that that is uh, doing judgment, you know, actually living it, making, doing justice, right, in the land. And it says, bain ish uvein re'ehu, between a man and his neighbor. And then, Jeremiah goes on to describe what this means. He says in verse 6, he says, The ger, the stranger, um, the yatum, the amana, you know, the orphan and the, the widow. And it says, if you do not oppress. And it says, vadam naki, in the blood of the innocent, that uh, all tishpehu, you do not 
that they do not slaughter Bamakom uh, Hase in this place. And then he goes on and says, the Ahare, and following after Elohim Aharim, other gods, and Lo Telhu, that you do not walk right in their ways to um to harm to do harm to you okay so the idea is that walking following after other gods does evil to the people you know it's the word ra there la ra it does um evil or it does harm unto themselves by by chasing after other gods and then isaiah goes he says um Vishikanti and at at Hem Bamakom Haze and I will I will cause you to dwell in this place and Beretz Asher Natati La Avra Hem meaning that in the land that I gave unto your fathers and then it says Lemin Olam the Ad Olam you know forever and ever and then the last verse in verse eight it says Hine Atem Bot him lahem all divre hashaker. Okay, that, uh, but you trust in lying words. You know, behold, you trust in lying words. And then it says, uh, levilti ohil, that um, you cannot profit. Okay, so here Jeremiah, he speaks of, he says that, for if you thoroughly amend your deeds okay and it is a i felt that this was a very torah based approach right that, that jeremiah is using here that that um as we looked at previously god calls us to listen to his voice to hear his words to obey you know to walk in his ways so what jeremiah is saying right here is he's saying if you will amend your ways and your deeds Okay, so he, he's drawing upon the Torah, he's drawing upon the words of Moshe, right? And, and in this idea of amending one's ways. And what reminded me of was this, this Torah text right here from Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 and 2. And these, these are the key verses. And it says, Vehayaim Tashmoa Tishma. Uh, so if it will be if you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and, and Moshe goes on and says Lishmor la asot et kol that to 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 keep and to do all of his commandments uh asher ani uh that I command to you uh hayom today Un tantcha Adonai Lahecha El Yon Al Kol Goy Haaretz. And and the most significant point here is that if we do and we obey God's word, we listen to his voice, what's he gonna do? He says that it says that um that he will elevate us to a uh, a position above the nations, right? So the Lord Lord is is doing these things and then he says that uh uva u alecha ko haberachot haela you know and then uh will come upon you all of of these blessings and um vehishiguha and they will overtake you um ki tishma beko adonaelecha because you listened to the Lord your God. You know, see, the idea is you, you, you we take and we pick up a Bible and we read it and we believe it. Okay? Right? And the, the Torah here describes the benefits of listening to the voice of God according to the scriptures. You know, the leaders, however, in his time and in our time, right? They would rather trust in themselves. They don't want to listen. And they maintain a mocking spirit against themselves and which um amongst themselves, I should I mean amongst themselves, which believes nothing and trusts no one, right? And, and these things teach us that we are always to have a teachable spirit, right? That that we are always to be humble, 
that in what Isaiah is teaching us, you know, we're always to seek the Lord God in his holy ways and his Mashiach, right? The Mashiach, the Messiah, maintaining humbleness of spirit. And this is a very important aspect of our lives as the children of God. And both Isaiah and Jeremiah are directing us to seek the Lord for his help, the Lord God, right? For his help to overcome this world. And these are these are eternal truths, right? These are, these are truths that are written all throughout the scriptures of, of the need to trust in the Lord, to believe in him, to seek him, right? Him sending his Messiah, his Mashiach, right? To, to save us from our sins. And we seek the Lord and, and believe in his Mashiach, right? The the, the, we need the righteousness of the tzaddik, right? The, the righteous one, right? And we need God's righteousness. And uh, these are the things that are taught in the apostolic writings in, in the New Testament. And so um, that's what I had for the introduction to this study.